While the RDD class has a fairly extensive interface with a nice set of methods that you can work with, it turns out there are some additional methods that are provided for specific types of RDDs. And many of these are provided by classes that have implicit conversions. One of these is the double RDD functions class. And so if you look in the API, in the same package as the RDD, and you know, as I mentioned, RDD has, has a good set of methods. There's quite a bit of functionality that you have with the RDDs, but there's some extra functionality that, that only makes sense with particular types. And one of those is if your RDD happens to be an RDD of double. So this is an RDD where the type that it works on, this type T, is double, then it makes sense to have some statistical functions. And these are provided by the RDD functions. Now, you don't actually have to explicitly do anything to use RDD functions because there is an implicit conversion from an RDD. It wraps it inside of a, a double RDD functions and allows you to, to use these. So I just want to show how we can do this inside of our code. We have this temperature data. If I wanted to, for example, take see we have our monthly temperature data there if I wanted to just look at say the standard deviation of my of the high temperatures and the standard deviations of the low temperatures standard deviation of highs in fact we could also do this for the lows and the average temperatures, there's what I want. I could take the, in, I'm gonna take the entire data set, which is all of our data, which is that RDD of temp data, which I am caching, good. Uh, so data, and I'm going to map it to pull out just the high temperatures. Now that gives me an RDD of doubles because the T max is a double and so then I could call standard deviation on that and of course it would be just as easy to look at the lows and the averages and so we've replaced this by T min and T average could run this while that's running I'll pull back up the functions we can come back and look at it so you can see we have things like the standard deviation the sum of variance and you can also get approximations and then and a mean you can get approximations of these things so if you have a truly huge data set it is possible that you uh, don't want to do a true calculation of a lot of these things um, and okay there's the plots that I will close because you don't need to see them so here's our standard deviation of the highs standard deviation of the lows and standard deviation of the averages across the entire year now of course most of this is due to that systematic variation uh, across the year between summer and and winter um, if we were to actually go for each month and subtract off averages or something like that, we could probably come up with something that's more like the deviation of, of these values from, um, from norms, but that's really not what this is measuring here. We'd have to do something more complex for that. If you wanted to do both a standard deviation and a mean, something like that, you could use stats because doing the standard deviation and the mean each one is a separate pass through all the data calling stats gives you back a stat counter and it basically runs through and calculates all these different statistics at the same time one other function is provided by the double rdd functions is this histogram so the histogram is you know as, as bins up your data there are two versions of this one where you just tell it how many bins you want to have and another where you tell it the range 
of, of the buckets that you want. Um, so you might feel like you could call either one of these, and in some ways you can, but the one that will work better for you uh, kind of depends upon the style of your data. So if I want to make a histogram for our data, for example, I want to make a histogram of high temperatures. Uh, that's a, a useful thing to do. Now, of course, this histogram just gives me back an array of counts, how many things fell into each bucket. If we use this version, one thing that we can do is we can make it so our buckets are all different sized, in which case we would need to pass false for even buckets. If we make them all the same size, we can pass true, and this can run a little bit faster. Uh, this version will always make them the same size. It will automatically go from the minimum to the maximum with a certain count of buckets. Now, the advantage of doing uh, this version on top is depending upon where things get cut. So for example, with temperatures, our values are integers. And so because these bins are on doubles, if you make the number of bucket counts not quite right, you'll see some interesting artifacts in, in your plot where some of the bins just have a smaller count. It's because, for example, only one temperature fit there, whereas the ones before and after it had two temperatures there. So for our purposes for binning integers, this first version where we give it the buckets, give it the actual values, is helpful. And then histograms are something that's nice to plot. Uh, so there is support for that inside of uh, SwiftViz so that we can make histogram plots. So here's a method that pulls up histograms. We'll come back to that in just a second. I first need to make my histogram. Well, this right here gave us the double RDD. So I am going to start off by making my bins. Uh, we haven't really looked at what the minimum temperature is here. We know the max is 107. I'm going to make, now note that in the API, this works with an array of doubles. Now Scala has these nice uh, ranges. So for example, I'm going to assume since this is in Minnesota that negative 20 might actually be a valid number so I'm going to go from negative 20 to 107, and while that seems happy, val uh, counts equals paste dot histogram of the buckets, which I called bins, and this can actually be true because we are evenly spacing them. This is unhappy because this isn't actually an array. It is a range, so I can call dot to array and get a, a nice value. Um, it's still not an array of doubles, so I have to make it so these things are doubles. And when you do that, you have to provide a stepping. Uh, so I'm actually going to have one degree bins from negative 20 to 107. So there's 127 different bins for this data. And this will be the counts of them. Okay, so there's bins, and the counts is the values we want to plot. Uh, the color, let's go with red dot, sorry, red ARGB. Do I have, uh, let's just put in the hex. 0x, ff, ff, 0, 0, 0, 0. Center on bins. This should be for the way that uh, that Spark does its histograms. This is going to be false. If you did your own binning up for a histogram and you were you wanted the value that you're passing in for bins was the the center of a bin, you could set this to be true. I'm just going to take defaults for those others. Uh, in Spark this array is one longer than this array because it includes the beginning of the first bin and the end of the second bin and then all of the divisions between all of the others. So let's make a val called hist, set it equal to that, fx renderer, 
of hist. And we can run this. Of course, it's running everything that we've done so far. We start to see our output. And then we'll get our plots. There's our standard deviations. Well, I didn't make this smaller so it fits inside of your view, but we can do that. So here we go from minus 20 up to 170. This is the frequency of high temperatures as they occur for Detroit Lakes, Minnesota. It's actually a really interesting plot because it's bimodal. I'm assuming this is the normal highs in the summer and this is the normal highs during the winter. Uh, and then you quickly transition from one to the other through the spring and fall. But that's something that could definitely be explored more. Anyway, this introduces you to the uh, double RDD functions and the things that you can do when you have an RDD of just doubles, the additional functions that you have, as well as making a histogram and plotting it with the SwiftViz2 library.